All right, so shall, shall we do this? We good? Yeah. All right, cool. So greetings, uh, people from everywhere. People of Earth, hello, and welcome to People's Exhibit, which is your exhibit, actually. This is the only show, uh, which only gaming show, actually, which is partially streamed from the Lake District. And uh, speaking of which, uh, we are joined today by Ed, uh, the Lady of the Lake Hicks, from the Lake District. Here I am. Yeah. He How had to he had How to break, break break apart his holiday, and just ruin it by being today with us um, and getting Everyone's stressed out. In, it's such a strop. Everyone's <laughs> like, "You're doing what? What's a podcast?" <laughs> and I'm like, "This is important." And they're like, "Why? What's it about?" And I said, "Video games." I mean, have you ever tried explaining what a podcast is to a lake? It's not easy. <laughs> it's quite challenging. Yeah, I you think, think so. you've got it. And you think you have an understanding when you look into the lake, but then you realize it's just your own reflection. And it's lake and you looking look a bit into you. fat because of the angle, and then you feel sad. Yeah, exactly. Plot of many movies involving lakes. <laughs> we, we usually open with Kickstarter stuff, um, but there was some Kickstarter stuff this week, but I was like, nah, so we're not going to do that this time around. Instead, okay. we are going to open with Red Bull stuff. Because we talked about this before, and it's exciting, always exciting to talk about merch. We got more stuff about merchandise today as well, by the way. So you may remember that uh, uh, there was a tie-in thing uh, with uh, Red Bull and what was it? De was it Destiny? I don't even remember what game is this. It so is far. indeed Destiny. It is our destiny to be talking about this, and uh, apparently it's very easy to crack those um, codes that are going to be. It was supposed to be like you know. As, yeah. as, a, as a reward for you buying the uh, said beverage of, cool, of room temperature and then cooling them in your refrigerator. Um, yeah. Because you just rearranged the numbers and you got them. Is this correct, Edward? Yeah, I found this information. It was uh, Paul Veer, the uh, Bland Beer uh, lead artist, um, tweeted this link to NeoGAF, this NeoGAF post, and he was like, this is hilarious and this is true. And, this, and and apparently, following this, were lots of people who tried this out. Were like, "Yeah, I just got my Destiny <laughs> DLC," and it's like laughably simple uh, um, code for making a, a cereal. But some intern was tasked with making it. Or this is actually what uh, maybe all cereals are actually quite simple equations, and we just don't realize. And we should just try, and we could all have Windows whatever for free. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, it's. It's the perfect fuck up for the perfect fucked DLC. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There's also there's a, a term for that when people are trying to come up with, like for example, you take a number, like you, you take a like an image on a website has a number, or like a product yeah. on Amazon has a code, and you change it a little bit and see yeah. what comes up. Like kind of, I, I forgot what they call it, but it's like you are doing this random uh, yeah. dice yeah, rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's a hacking term. I can't remember what it's called. And obviously, you don't yeah, really so gain like, anything but like your own entertainment. But uh, nonetheless, some some people <laughs> do it. I, mean, I I can actually see why it could be fun. Just just buying books by the ISBN, just randomly <laughs> buying books by ISBN numbers and RNG and seeing what you get. Considering that most books are shit, you're not gonna do pretty well, probably. In, in, in I know, it'd be pretty funny though, the kind of shit you get, you know, yeah. like the gay Victorians or whatever. <laughs> it would be wonderful. So today, what I'm trying to do with uh, the way the docket is uh, organized, I'm trying to sort of balance out the horrible stuff like Red Bull stuff with like somewhat something that is more encouraging and life affirming. So um, uh, this is all about uh, No Man's Sky. I had more footage released, and it's it's again we've covered this in a couple of shows, um, and you're gonna see some IGN stuff happening in there, which is depressing. But overall. Uh, they finally started talking about what the game is about. Um, <laughs> and uh, they showed a lot of the things they haven't, yeah, well, we haven't, no one has seen before because they were actually playing the game as opposed to being, oh, look, look at the stuff, look at all the animals and uh, yeah. the, the, the things flying in there. This whale, it has no business in the sky, so cute, so beautiful. So... And um, and it, it, it's it's looking now like a video game, so you can be like, oh, I I understand you have crafting, and they do, <laughs> and, and it's not a horrible. Like I kind of, I kind of feel better about that game now that they just kind of well come clean, so to speak. As in like we talked about the mechanics in the game, 
finally so yeah. if it feels like I, and i do feel like i want to play it i would i'd probably enjoy it it's a to describe it in a very succinct way it's like uh what was the game called proteus you know like the one of those walking simulator ones like um yeah. beautiful world you walk around you can't do anything you just look at the stuff and there's some frogs jumping around kind of like that but we actually you can do stuff so it's a lot of exploration it's not dangerous unless you want to make it so kind of thing has a yeah. um a wanted system of it, straight from GTA so if you go to a, <laughs> yes if you go to a planet and it starts shooting animals the uh there's like a yeah. self-replicating robot force the sentinels that will come after you and they'll be like uh oh. you 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 fucked up and then like if you shoot them then this, the the wanted ratings go to like it goes from 1 to 5 stars just like in GTA and he actually said <laughs> yeah yeah they haven't patented this so we could actually steal it um the five star rating okay. yeah then you go and there's like a Minecraft bit where you just go around and mine stuff and then you can combine them and sell them on and there's trading where you can sell elements or huh? products you make out of that and blah blah blah, huh? get better ships and then try to explore this universe. And also the well, I guess the more original mechanic is uh the one that they've announced a long time ago, which is uh finding new species which are procedure generated and then uploading them and naming them after your penis. Uh oh, and then yeah, getting basic. getting yeah, getting paid for it as well. Dickus Botticus. I, I wonder how they, because no one asked them that question yet, I wonder how they're going to be dealing with that situation where everyone's going to be calling them dick. <laughs> and, yeah. or or whatever. Um, and yeah. <laughs> he, he also talked about um, the, the core, there's like a sort of a core hook narrative thing where you probably want to go to the center of the universe and there's something there, mystery... Uh, is it Peter Molyneux? That's what they said in the video. <laughs> they're actually... Really? Uh, yeah, they're joking about that. Because <laughs> IGN guy's like, what's what's in there? Is it Peter Molyneux? He's like, yeah, that would be a bit hard to do. <laughs> that's brilliant. Oh, that's fantastic. Very pleased with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and it's, it still looks, like, interesting. It looks like... It's a very, ch like, a chill-out game. Like, uh, this would be great on drugs. Um, if yeah. you're just kind of having a chill Space one, golf. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So having a chill just having one, having a chill one in No Man's Sky. Yeah, yeah, that's just the blazing cool. across No Man's Sky. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like he's getting attacked by a goat there, and then he shoots that goat, and then the police comes after him. Um, <laughs> that's the that's the idea. But this also reminded me of that concept where um, where something is better before you uh, before you actually experience it. I don't. Know, it probably has a name, but uh, I remember. Uh, kind of, Buyer's remorse? It's sort of. You don't have to buy it, though. It's like, uh, imagine uh, you already have an apple and you, you're hungry and you go, oh, my God, this apple this is going to be probably really good. And you taste it and you eat it and it's kind, it, it's good. But, like, your anticipation of the apple was better um, than, like, the apple itself. But it, and I think that's what they're fighting. Uh, anal sex? Anal sex, I guess, yeah. So Bukowski actually had a similar idea where he was uh, talking about sex in the, in, the, in the similar concept of, like, so he's saying that the idea of, well, he used a different word, but the idea of a vagina is much better than the vagina itself. And he said, don't get me wrong, I really like the vagina, but just the idea of it is magical. I like the idea is even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> idea of it is magical while the real thing is biology. So I think yeah. that's what they're kind of fighting with this as well. They're finally trying to, because there's been so much hype about it. They're probably yeah, really this, worried right this now. This game has been one really, really purple, enormous vagina for yeah. quite a while. Yeah, I and think it's, so. It's getting a bit platonic <laughs> at this point. You know, they're going to have to start yeah. showing us the horse. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. And you can also, well, one of the cool things was like, Again, it's it's again a bit Minecrafty in that sense, but you can you can like dig out giant holes in the planets and stuff like this. There's very free approach to what the hell's going on, and that's kind of cool. Again, in a very I, I very chilled out way. To, I look forward to Telltale's No Man's Sky series. <laughs> and hopefully, <laughs> it will happen. You know, that's gonna be a movie. <laughs> uh, but there, again, coming back to Molyneux and Curiosity stuff, they if they have like terraforming essentially, then again, people are just gonna start sculpting dicks in planets. And since oh. it's to a certain degree permanent, I'm not sure if the mining is permanent, because then you could just sculpt a giant dick and then leave and go to like from hop from every planet, call it penis, <laughs> uh, sculpt a giant penis into the planet, and then go to the next planet to do the same thing. That's it. Yeah. When when the aliens come and they find Earth abandoned and they find these servers still running, <laughs> I want the archaeology of humanity to be this 
virtual universe that's identical, but everything has been carved into dicks, and then we just left it on and all died. And then to go, I wonder what this symbol means. That, that's like a more positive image of the future, though. The more negative one would be they come <laughs> around, they carve a giant dick in through like our cities <laughs> and farmland. <laughs> And they leave. Yeah. And we're like, oh my god, the aliens are here. The, the huge knowledge or whatever just came around to carve a dick in the, in, in the planet. And they're, they're gone. Never come back. Like millions I, it's, dead. I just imagine that, that scene from a roadside picnic where the yeah. guy's saying, where the guy's explaining, you know, what if it was just a roadside picnic? Yeah. Well, it's like the alternate version of that where <laughs> the aliens carve this, like, language into the uh, into the into the, the, the on, on the earth in these huge letters and we're all like i wonder what it means this gift from the gods and it just means the dick <laughs> or like i was here in 99 yeah <laughs> or even worse it means kappa oh no <laughs> <Hashtag> kappa <laughs> oh. have, just a big kappa face have you seen the guy there's like a uh, there's a video where the, the troubled teenager with a giant uh, bow tie on his head goes to different Minecon conventions and tries to get a questioning and doing the uh, Q and A thing, and then he goes, "All right, everybody, now say Kappa," and no one ever says Kappa. Oh God, no! I saw the first like <laughs> two seconds of this video because you linked it, and I was like, "Wait a minute, no!" And then I went outside. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. I think that's an appropriate reaction to what was happening. I didn't today. even see the like the punchline or anything. I was like, "This, I, I could feel it, like yeah. you know, you feel you're being watched or something." Like it was like that. Yeah, it was. It was. Like, it was... This is... It was pretty bad. It was the void looking back into you kind of like situation. Oh boy! Speaking oh. of void, Minecraft. Um, <laughs> apparently, people have been quite salty um, because the Windows 10 version of Minecraft, whatever that means, I guess it is potentially uh, getting. Uh, no, bro, I don't want your. By the way, banned. Um, uh, the version coming with uh, uh, Windows 10 is not the main version not the java version but it's the pocket version or okay. so-called pocket version of minecraft which means it is cross-platform multiplayer or whatever okay. but yep. uh it cannot be modded and it only supports up to eight players as opposed to much more on the java version i don't know what's the limit on the job yeah, how, how many i don't know the limit either. i guess there could be like 50 60 i don't know i mean i could imagine more than eight yeah. probably i've seen like tiny glimpses of videos where tons of people in Minecraft are doing stuff together. So, How would... is that a player unknown Minecraft Battle Royale going? I don't think it's happening. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Well, so far, anyway. I haven't heard anything. But, I mean, this is my Microsoft now. So everyone's also going like, oh, you know, big company bought it, so now they're fucking it up, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, yeah, it's still... I mean, they're, both, they're saying they're supporting both of them, both of the versions, one that is moddable, one that it isn't. But, I mean, for how long is... A different question, and yeah. uh, about more bad news for people of Minecraft. Uh, the I watched the trailer. I watched the the thing. Um, that was that was hard going, man. Yeah, it was. That was, it was, that was pretty soft watching. Yeah. Um, apparently, it, it's about stuff. That's that's what I got from it. I even watched uh, Eurogamer talking about what it's going to be about, and I came out with nothing. Like I can't. I can't, I can't retell you. Like I was, today, when I was preparing for the show, I was like, okay, so I'm going to be talking about this. How? What Better do watch I? It. Yeah. What do I say? Like, how do I? So you know, I go through all the topics, and I was like, and I couldn't. Like, there's not. It's, it's about choices, I think, or something. Uh, well, there was one shot I remember that I can say something about, where uh, there was a shot of some lava in a cave, and this voice that sounded like Randy from uh, South Park going. <laughs> You don't know what you've done. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, cool, Randy from South Park. Maybe they got the Trey Parker and Matt Stone on it." But I don't I, think so. I think, I and also, the worst part is, I think that was played straight. It wasn't, yeah, a joke. But it made me laugh as if it were a joke. But do they even have that in tell, um, Telltale games, like the the very meta sort of self referential joke stuff? Do they do that? Because they're no, pretty serious, aren't I, they? They, they, they? The thing is because. Uh, they work pretty much exclusively by um, renting IPs or whatever, or making deals with IPs, yeah. and then doing, I think, good work with them. Um, and so I think they're quite serious about being like, all right, what do you want us to do with your IP? I think they do have a little bit of freedom, but I think they build up a lot of trust based on the idea that they're not going to do stuff like that. Yeah. 
So I think they're just playing it straight and just going for the bank. Yeah, possibly. And I mean, they're they're probably in black. I mean, they're probably making decent amount of money because the franchises they're. I would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. franchises they're working with are, um, are 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 big ones. I mean, what was it? It was the Game of Thrones and Game of Thrones. and Walking Dead, right? Is there anything else? Walking Dead. There's also um, uh, that comic uh, Wolf Among Us thing, which I don't imagine has a huge amount of money. I don't know, depending what publisher they're attached to. I can't actually mm. remember, but I, I imagine I, that'd be a less big thing. See, I didn't even know that was actually a like a its own IP. I thought they just kind of came up with that, but so apparently, no, no, they no, never no, have their own funny. stuff. Is that how it is? <laughs> I think that's the deal. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, but yeah, I guess, and it has like. <sighs> They never have anything to do besides like, oh, this is about the characters from the universe with the game or whatever they're dealing with apart from... Um, if apart from that, there's nothing else when the Telltale does with. So I, I guess people who are into Minecraft are still going to be pretty pretty happy about what's going on, but that's, uh, that's probably... Yeah, I remember them being very specific that it wasn't going to impose some law that would limit kind of you know, people's experience. Which is not Microsoft. possible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you a story about Minecraft, but it's not lore. What? But at the same time, would you not agree that from watching that trailer, they've achieved that as close as humanly possible? For me, yeah, yeah. Because I don't, <laughs> I completely give no fucks about what's it going on. It feels so, like, empty. I, yeah. I did, like you said, that is the perfect summary. I just didn't learn anything I, about yeah. it from watching that. Except There's that a... they want you to be excited about it. Yeah, and there's a pig in there. That's all I remember. I remember there's a pig. Yeah. And, yeah. That was the most. And Zambabalinis. Yeah. Well, but well done. So, speaking of of, of things and, and zombies, um, PewDiePie money situation. Well, once more, every year, there's a there's a time where I I think PewDiePie files his taxes, and somehow yeah. they're public. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> And this is one of those things. Yeah, and uh, people go, "Oh my God, a YouTuber has millions." Um, yeah. So I know that you you had a rough time watching this video. Ed, tell us why. It wasn't horrible. I, I you know, like I said, I'm not a, a fan of PewDiePie. Something I noticed about the reactions to this video is uh, overwhelmingly uh, people, at least I thought I was saying, "Yeah, you know, I I hate his stuff. I don't like it at all." But it seems like a, not an evil person and that i suppose you know we're at that point in as a society and uh, as a species that the nicest thing we can say is well he's not evil he <laughs> didn't kill a guy yeah. um I, and i i well i guess i gotta say that i kind of agree i don't i don't i don't hate him i just obviously i really dislike his work but it's not for me it's it's like me like frothing at the mouth at like a boy band but everybody in it's probably fine it does the you know, average amount of cocaine. Um, I just <laughs> not too much. You know, not too much. Just yeah. just just an average amount. Nothing. You know. Um, yeah. So this is the thing. Uh, I I do find YouTube comment Q and A's a little bit uh, if they're really super self serving and not actually informative. Uh, but that's maybe the strongest thing I could say about it. I don't know. I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to disappoint. I didn't feel very strongly about it. I do. In principle, I guess, like the idea of people talking about pay, because the more you talk about pay, generally this kind of pushes towards fairer wages for people in general. Yeah. Although this doesn't really achieve that for anybody, mm. except maybe one of those things where it's like uh, this, to the takeaway of this is being successful uh, by the definition of making lots of uh, money does not necessarily make you... Uh, evil in the same way that being unsuccessful does not necessarily make you good. Yeah, absolutely. And I yeah. think sometimes people get a bit stuck with that before they go on to actually even looking at the character of a person or the impact of their actions, etc. Yeah, I, absolutely. And uh, it was it was kind of... It's repetitive, because I remember this happening last year. It was like 4 million instead of 7 oh, or something really? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everyone was like, <laughs> oh my god. And then next year it's probably going, oh, 9 million? Right! Um, there's this thing. Know. There's yeah. this thing in in um, there. They do a lot in in Georgia where every because summers are very hot, especially in the capital. They like go the temperature goes up yeah. to forty degrees every summer, and every summer people gonna go. This is the first time we've had heat like this. This never been so hot. This and I 
And I, I started noticing it's like we're a very young age, obviously. And I, I'm like, I was a kid thinking like, wait a minute though, like last summer was really hot. And then I like, I started, okay, okay. This summer is, is 41 degrees was the maximum, whatever. And it was like for a week. Yeah. Next summer, 41 degrees for a week. And I was like, this is way. And, and when you tell them, Hey, but like last summer, and they'd be like, no, 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 no. But, but this, seriously, seriously, this, this summer can. But it's an unnatural heat is the next response. So I guess it's the unnaturalness of the of someone actually making that amount of money that bothers people. Or whatever. <laughs> I, I again, I, I agree with the same idea. It's obviously content is not for you and not for me and not for anyone that is in any way yeah. like us. But um, he does the job. Kids get entertained. He gets paid. It is absolutely yeah. fine. I have like some respect for uh, what stuff that he does and like the shit probably he has to put up with, and because yeah. whenever I you respect, reach... there's a lot of work involved, actually. Yeah, yeah absolutely, and also the you know as, the... as we do similar stuff. Yeah, and it it turns into the kind of the golden cage situation where apparently as, as soon as he goes out, he lives in Brighton now. So as soon as he goes out to get some milk, um, he, he gets mobbed, which is, I mean, I, I guess it's nice for your ego, but then at some point it gets kind of, yeah, ah, I just want to get some milk, you know? Yes. Yeah. So uh, some sympathy there, I guess, as well, together with all the other, uh, the gamut of the emotions that I feel for PewDiePie. <laughs> um, speaking of emotions... How does a, uh, I know you can't see it because you're blind today, but how does a Mega Man helmet make you feel? Um, well, like, uh, on a drawing, <laughs> Mega Man makes you feel great. Uh, you know, in, in the booklet of the Proto Man uh, album, amazing. Like, right. such iconic artwork, such an uh, amazing hero character, nice and simple. As something I could buy and put on my head, uh, it's... A time saver if I want to do Mega Man cosplay, but also I guess <laughs> makes me look lazy and rich. Yeah. Um, as something to wear because I think it's cool. As we've said probably before many times on these merch bits, uh, if somebody's got the money and they really want it, then I guess they can have it. But I think you look like an idiot. You just look like an idiot. Yeah. How 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 much do you think it costs? This is, has lights on it, right? And it's quite yeah. big. Yeah. Uh, now, here's the question. Does it... I'm guessing it doesn't, but does it protect against impacts? Is it basically I, a bike helmet? No. It's plastic. It's pure... Because I think, if it was a... Okay. It's, it's just pure it for decoration. Yeah. If it's decoration, eh, I reckon it... Well, either way, no, either way, I think it's the same price. But I was just thinking, like, I would also think it was cool if it was actually physically protection and yeah. worked as a bike helmet. And I'd be like, all right, I'll, I'll let you have that. I reckon it's probably it's over a hundred pounds, definitely. Yeah, it's right? hundred fifty dollars, which would be about hundred pounds, I guess. That's about hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it doesn't okay. even have Bluetooth headphones in the thing. Where like, because I was, I would think like if they are doing oh, that, oh, oh. they put like headphones yeah. in there or something, something like use the space that you are putting on someone's head. But at, okay. at least the girl yeah. in the picture is pretty happy about wearing it, so I guess yeah, it, it's it's all right. Uh, speaking of plastic things that make no sense. Um, Windows phone business is, is uh, suffering. Uh, it, it didn't really enjoy the whole like mobile is the future thing. <laughs> it's uh, very, uh, very rapidly turned into mobile is the past thing. Um, they... <laughs> Someone else's mobile is the future. Yeah, I actually have an e excellent quote about this. So what happened, what's, what's, what's going on with that is that they are firing, uh, how many people? Let's, let's like get 8, a- 8,000? Yeah, 7,800 jobs being cut because of restructuring with their phone business. That's a, that's like a ton of jobs. So this this to me sounds like goodbye. So is this is this restructuring like you restructure a house of cards into a joker? Or you have a house of cards, you have a bit of petrol, you pour the petrol on the house of cards, <laughs> you have a match. You strike the match. Oh dear. So I guess yeah. yeah, they've made no money and they're basically cancelling Windows Phone, right? Basically, that's what it really is, right? Yeah, they never said that, but it seems like that's a lot of jobs. They they must be doing something less now. You know what I mean? Like a lot of less stuff happening, unless they were all marketing people. In which case, they're not more doing marketing for the Windows Phone anymore, which didn't help because they didn't really sell that well. <laughs> and also, it was a bit of a crap phone. Um, but I, what, what was the most fascinating bit, a bit about this, uh, information, I'm reading this from the Eurogamer, um, article, and this just, they're just quoting whatever the press release or whatever, um, 
uh, their current CEO did, whose name is, I, I'm probably going to fuck it up, but I think it's Satya Nadella, if I'm pronouncing that name correctly, is the okay. relatively sure. new um, CEO. I think two years ago he was installed. Ha, huh, puns. Anyway, so uh, he emailed Microsoft employees uh, with an update, and this is like two paragraphs from it, and it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's just a wonderful piece of text. He says, we are moving from a strategy to grow a standalone phone business to a strategy to grow and create a vibrant Windows ecosystem, including our first party device family. Right? This is just half of it. Now, the second half is even better, probably. In the near term, we'll run a more effective and focused phone portfolio with retaining capability for long term reinvention in mobility everything that isn't a patent is gone <laughs> yeah pretty much right <laughs> <laughs> say <laughs> say goodbye to, to your kids and wife you're not gonna make any more money from us <laughs> there's like one guy going oh, I'm, boy am i glad i i just numbered the parking spaces instead of put everybody's names <laughs> I'd have to repaint everything. <laughs> well, at least it would create a job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Microsoft oh, is <laughs> investing in infrastructure. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. Uh, so, I don't know. I feel like there's. I, I I suppose this actually this is already covered by some indie companies. You actually find a lot of them refreshingly honest. But I feel like you know above that that, that kind of watershed where you, you are in this big serious corporate entity i feel that it would be refreshing if somebody just went yeah that shit didn't work so we're fucking cutting it uh, and just a picture of you know volmer or whatever going <laughs> uh, he's not he's not the ceo anymore though that's the, this guy is like instead of him yeah uh, yeah whatever but it would be funnier with him i agree <laughs> and maybe like a, you know there's like those gifs that i have also sound <laughs> actually just doing that repeatedly or like a 10 hour yeah. video having you know, like that ah. yeah. just going ah. and it, it's, it's called windows phone. it's called windows phone dot gif beautiful uh, have you ever actually held a windows phone in your uh, hands i've never even seen one i don't yeah i don't necessarily believe they exist no i've seen one one though but i've seen them in the, like in a commercial and like in a poster and stuff like that but i've held one in my hand and it was it was like windows 8 thing and uh apparently there's no apps for it and the battery can't be changed and it's kind of shit usually and hmm. but they, I, their main selling point on at one point which was like surprising to me was that we have a 30 megapixel camera like no one gives a shit about 30 megapixel camera or like I could buy a camera for the amount of the money that um, we give me. Like I would give for your shitty phone <laughs> instead of having a thirty megapixel camera on a phone that you just uh, discontinued essentially. This this megapixel thing is kind of a slight pet hate for me as well because it's it's really annoying that you that the marketing for cameras. I'm sure you know this as well. Like they basically resolve down or they they give the impression that they can resolve down the quality of a camera and the utility of a camera. To a single dimensional figure, yeah. which is even a failure, a failure to represent quality in itself, because it actually should be an area, not like a linear amount. So, like obviously, the you know, for you to double the resolution of a two megapixel, you need an eight megapixel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Like, yeah. You need four, and then oh wait, no, you need double your two. Yeah, you need an eight, don't you? Don't you? I I think so. I yeah, 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 yeah. It, it it's the power of two or whatever isn't it yeah yeah oh whatever anyway this this it's not a linear thing like yeah. you can't just add a pixel and it's just like that much better it's it's a diminishing thing because of the area yeah involved and uh also you can have a fucking 100 megapixel uh sensor well done by the way of making it that small but one your film back is going to be tiny it's going to look like shit your lens that you're shoving it through is probably a piece of shit so it doesn't matter what it lands on. It's going to look like ass. Uh, I, I, I hate it. Anyway, uh, yeah, you're completely right. Windows Phone, waste of time. Rubbish. Yeah. Um, no, like, <laughs> the main thing that they never advertise, really, and actually matters in, in digital cameras is the size of the chip that receives the light. Um, and mm. 
if even you have like hundred thousand megapixel, whatever this, if the, and the size remains the same, they can only accept like that amount of light, and the quality is yeah, limited. Yeah, the image by... will have no depth. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like crap. Yeah, yeah. So the lens is 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 big, but even the biggest thing is because like the thirty five millimeter film is is bigger sensory area than, for example, your D five uh, sensor, which is one of the biggest ones still in in in, in digital cameras. I think it's one to one on the D five. I th think it's like four point five. Oh, sorry, four uh, four fifths of whatever. Or it's like slightly smaller than. Yeah, it's I, not it's, a two thirds one. It's 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 up from. The yeah, the two thirds anyway. one is the other one. Is is the way is the, yeah. the like the slightly lower model, whatever. Anyway, yeah. so this is Windows phones. Let us here. Uh, let's get out of there and let's talk about something, <laughs> something nice. Like for example, uh, Street Fighter Four improving and uh, Street Fighter Five beta being announced. Uh, and this is Ed Hicks reporting on the subject. <laughs> so uh, yeah, the horrible release of Street Fighter. Uh, uh, for Ultra on uh, PS4 has been somewhat improved. There was a patch that fixes... Uh, I looked at the release notes and it fixes all the ones I'd heard of, all the anti-editing stuff, the sound glitches, the sonic boom graphics glitches, uh, a couple of other things. Just like everything I'd heard about... Actually, I don't know if I heard the input lag was addressed properly, but um, there, there was tons of stuff. Uh, fixed, so it sounds like it's starting to become actually something nice. I don't think it's going to be used for Evo anyway because it's such short notice. I think that would fuck up too much stuff. So I imagine that will still be on the 360, possibly. I, yeah, um, I don't think they would do it so quickly. That would, that's probably not. That feasible. would be a, a yeah. bit of a mess uh, because uh, recently, uh, was something that was interesting is there was a fighting game tournament CEO, and Mortal Kombat 10 was there. MKX, sorry. Yeah. And. Uh, they released a, a patch three days before, which changed timings on moves and stuff. Oh, and there wow. were like top, top eight players dropping combos. <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, so is that uh, actually yeah, a serious it, sport, like um, Mortal Kombat? Like, um, is it? Yeah, yeah, MK, MK yeah. Uh, was very big uh, at CEO. It, it, it's it's as far as attendance goes. It's I don't think it's as big as like Street Fighter, but it's bigger than uh, Marvel at the moment. I think it's around the same size as. Uh, uh, Ki, uh, but yeah, yeah, it's it's up there since this game came out somewhat recently, and they're still doing like bonus characters released after the fact and stuff, yeah. and and they're patching quite a lot, which you know it's good to be maintained. But if you're changing the way characters play, like right up before like important tournaments, you're gonna really piss off your, uh, your yeah, obviously your, your it's players. yeah, it's uh, a unique problem to people train for tournaments. You can't yeah, just, yeah, absolutely. And if it's timing based and stuff, and it's not some simple thing, like if you nerf some damage on something, that's not too bad. But still, though, annoying. it's not as bad. Do, Even do then, it after like, a tournament. Have... Yeah, yeah, do it after the tournament. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but the <laughs> so beta's anyway, happening uh, as well, right? isn't there? That's right. So now, uh, Street Fighter Five, uh, the beta is going to happen. I believe it's July twenty sixth. It's like a five day limited uh, beta for PlayStation. Four. They've got four characters, so they're not actually including Birdie or Cammy straight away. And then halfway into it, I think they include them back in. Yeah. And it's only online versus. They're kind of trying to stress test their architecture, I believe. And also, there was more. There was something else about it. I can't remember. Oh, and today, this is hot off the press, they announced Ken. So oh. Ken is in, and Ken is not just a fucking Shoto. He's not a clone. They said they weren't doing kind of Shoto clones for everybody in this. And he looks like he's very fast. He looks oh. like he's rushed out, oh. kind of based. Very lots of kicks. I think cool. he still has some. He has I definitely he has a fireball still, but I don't know if it's just something he can throw out. Uh, I think his V skill, you know, that yeah. uh, thing that replaces focus attack, is like a, a really quick dash forward. Cool. Is and, is he uh, is he still in love with Ryu though? Is what I want to know. I'm sure they're still bros. Um, I believe this is set before in the chronology before Street Fighter Three, so they were bros in that. They were bros before, the, unless it's like the middle part of a romantic comedy. Uh, they'll still be bros uh, <laughs> in Five. Um, yeah, uh, he, he looked really cool. His hair style looked okay. The coloring on his hair looked really like it was in a different world. So. It's from some angles he looks really cool. From some angles he looks really goofy. But there's lots of like uh, Ken hardcore fans who are saying like, "This is great. This is the Ken we wanted. 
came from four or so. <laughs> Excellent. I, so, I, yeah, I hope in the story yeah. mode there there is a thing where like if you, you go through the guy the can or Ryu then they reunite reunite get it? <laughs> oh, it was just now just before the just before the podcast uh, Claudia our friend Claudia is at um, uh, San Diego Comic Con and there's a Capcom booth there Mike Ross is there and I got her to buy a t shirt to get him to sign it and I'm happy she did it. Yes, you did it. I got oh. a picture of him holding. Excellent, beautiful, <laughs> yeah, nice. Um, <laughs> let's move on to less nice things then. Since yeah, something because horrible. This is a bit, a bit too happy, like that for, for my liking. So, um, here's a game everyone's really excited about, um, ex apart from me. It's uh, Metal Gear Five, the Phantom uh, Fart is the <laughs> official name. So, that's, that's going with <laughs> yeah. The Phantom Fart. So what they did after uh, they they had obviously a trailer or whatever video for E3 video. Never had an E3 video. My grandma had an E3 video. So after E3 video, they did the post E3 video where they're showing the same mission. Um, and so this was like a huge marketing dump of like look and look look how many things we can show you. <laughs> and uh, so they're showing the same mission done in four different ways. Now I tried okay. to watch this. And um, let, let's actually start way back with Metal Gear 1. So I liked Metal Gear 1. I think it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And I played Metal Gear 2 and... Eh, and I never played any other ones because I didn't really like Metal Gear 2. Um, okay. And to me personally, Metal Gear series are kind of like the wheel. When the wheel was invented, people ran around with it probably crazy and they were like, Oh my god, look, it's rolling, it's rolling, it's happening! Ah! <laughs> and um, it's kind of like with fire, or kind of like with cinema, you know, when the brother Lumiere brother showed that train coming into the thing, and people were like, Rah! Yeah, 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 and then but now I look at the train in the movie, I feel nothing, and so I feel I have a similar feeling to Metal Gear stuff. Um, and in here, so I, I I'm, again, I understand that the fans of the series are going to be probably very, very, very happy about it because there's so many. Yeah. It's kind of like it's, to me, it feels like. The dishonoredization of Metal Gear, almost. Even in, though in the first one there were things you could do differently, um, yeah. but it was still like the roots were still in 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 that early console era of like figure it out. It's almost a puzzle. While here, yeah. like they, well, they show four ways of doing a mission here, and then there's one more they did with E3. So there's five ways of doing, and then again, very dishonored feeling of like, look at all the approaches we give you. Kind of thing. Yeah. Um, how yeah. does how do you what do you think of all about all of this shit I've been saying for the last five minutes? Well, uh, Metal Gear. When you dropped it at two, uh, I think we shared some of the concerns about like the map design, for example. It was like lots of hexagons. It's a bit constrained. Uh, didn't wasn't quite at that point where they were going. You could solve this in this way, this way, this way. Um, but yeah, it had it started to. You could start to see it go off the rails a bit. Huh, more references to trains. <laughs> um, but I, I did kind of stick with it more, and I think MGS3 was really good gameplay-wise. The, the story, like, there was some way into 2 where I went, okay, and checked out as far as story went. And I kind of enjoy on a surface level, like, the bosses and how strange they are and their designs and their interactions. But I'm just like, I don't care anymore. One was cool. It was like a cool action film with like some twists and turns, but now it's become just a knot of confusion. But anyway, uh, the gameplay in 3 was really good, and I don't know, if you somehow are blessed with infinite time at some point, I would actually recommend that you play it, because it actually did have really, really good uh, sneaky gameplay. The third one. Anyway, yeah, the third one. third one was, was great for that. Um, the fourth was where it began doing that thing where it's like there are multiple ways of you solving it, and it's sort of... It was only like two or three, and it never really had the full dynamic thing. And whereas with this, the fifth one, they started using words like open world, and that's when I started kind of worrying a bit. But at the same time, it seems like they're executing it fairly well. I never played Dishonored, so I never had that um, experience. But I can I can get from what you're saying, like how you'd feel like you weren't really discovering something. You were yeah. discovering what they let you discover. Kind yeah, of all exactly. Like, Here you go. Oh, you found path. 3B mid stealth, <laughs> and and you'd be like, I feel a little gross, a little bit, 
Yeah, and you imagine like a guy with a with a clipboard sitting there, like, uh -huh, discovered Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Trend. There'll be stats at the end. Saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You and five percent of people went down this one. Yeah, yeah, like you know, with the with the achievements, where where you know how many, what the oh. percentage of players have the same achievement you do, and apparently you're supposed to feel good about this or something. Something. It's yeah. What I, another thing I noticed about the video itself is. Like this is supposed to be, you know, the shit, right? It's it's a tr quadruple A game, um, big budget, a lot of expectations, and it doesn't look like it doesn't. Well, like I haven't played it, so I was gonna say it doesn't feel right, but it doesn't feel right. I'm gonna say it anyway. Uh, it, it's the movement, the stuff that happens. It's it's like really, really, we're doing this. Like when he goes up to the wall and he keeps running at the wall. Instead of having like this fluid or or or, or something, or that when he drives a car, it feels like he, the car is made of cotton and um, it's a very heavy cotton. You know that the thing where like what is heavier, one pound of cotton or one pound of uh, nails? And obviously <laughs> yeah. the cotton is heavier. Um, <laughs> and that's his car. The car is driving in here. Uh, yeah. The whole aiming system where he has this giant crosshair, which is like. I don't know. It's like the fifth of the screen in the middle, and when he fires, it just goes like wide, like like you know your mama used to do in the eighties. It's it, it's like it looks like I was looking at this crosshair. I was like, what is going on? What what kind of horrible shooter is this? But um, again, this is not what people love it for. Obviously, they love it for the characters. They love it for you know this sneakiness approach, and then the funny bits they put in there, like oh, let's tie everyone to balloons now, and then he 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 starts this. Like, this is the most video game bit about it, probably, because he has 24 balloons up his ass somehow, together with all the guns, and you can, nowadays, you can at least see the guns, like, he's carrying them on his body, realism, yeah. immersion, shit like that. Balloons, though. Where yeah. is he keeping the balloons? Because they are insta-inflate, which means there must be little cylinders where, like, the air is kept, right? And he has, like, over 20 of those balloons on him to be able like he, and he he knocks out a guy and then he deploys the balloon on him the guy goes on the balloon immediately wakes up while he's like a meter away from the ground for some reason because he cause yeah. for the comic effect of him going like what 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 Woo! <laughs> yeah it's like come on yeah. I, I love the idea of just having a cutscene where he does that because all the cutscenes in Metal Gear are really serious and they're like this is the theme you're gonna have this theme and, and you know a lot of them are really well directed and, and written some of them um and you're just like yeah i feel like i connect with this character and the pain he feels and you remember the trailer of phantom pain this yeah. spot, covered in blood and then you just see this guy looking in a mirror just going, oh, all i feel is pain looking at his robot hand and then his robot hand reaches into his pocket and takes out like a body balloon and just attaches <laughs> it to this unconscious guy next to him and then Fills it with nitrous, and then it just floats <laughs> off, and he just salutes him, and he's like, got speed, soldier. <laughs> <laughs> and what happens with the guys with the balloons, they're not just going to, like, space or something. They, they're oh. they're collecting them in the air. They're going to his base. Yeah, yeah, they're going to, I think, as I understand, the aerial vehicle is collecting them and capturing them after he balloons them. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you can also detach his arm and use it as a remote, as, like, a drone. Yeah, I heard you could use it like a rocket like, or something. Or, or yeah, you, like, it's like like those robots in the Japanese cartoons, you know, when they go like power arms and they go. Uh, you know, have you seen Grandizer? Uh, no. Okay, well, I think so. I, I, we, we should check it out when we're drinking next time and just do like the YouTube crap thing. You know, where they put YouTube poop and one of them will be Grandizer. It has an yeah. amazing song. I had a classmate who knew the words. He never he didn't speak Japanese, but he knew the words to Grandizer theme song. <laughs> like just by the way they sounded as opposed to like understanding that the meaning <laughs> so from big games to small things uh bbc micro bit is a new um i, I guess it's a computer it's a programmable computer they are yeah it's like a raspberry pi i think kind of but that smaller kind of thing. yeah yeah because because you know it's in britain so you got to scale it down yeah absolutely <laughs> that sounds like a really cute idea yeah. uh that's all I can really say. I think it's really nice, a good idea, getting people into tech. Uh, unlike uh, the method of kind of shaming people into tech, like our <laughs> new education secretary. Do you hear about this shit? No, I don't. What do you our mean? New, our new education secretary is like uh, fucking um, said. Anyone with anyone going into arts, it's a mistake because uh, they'll limit their options in the future. <laughs> 
This is the person in charge of all education in the UK, basically, said, yeah, fuck the arts. <laughs> like, you should... If I was if I was like prime minister, I would instantly fire this person. Anyway, we're not talking about that. It just really annoyed me. So I'm sorry, I brought it up. <laughs> no, that's all good. So uh, the, he would enjoy this thing then, because this is given to every. Well, it's going to be given, I believe, this year to every seven-year kid, so eleven, twelve-year-olds. Yes, seven. That's like eleven yeah. or twelve. Yeah. So the uh, next the middle. School. Yeah, or I mean, I guess everyone, even they're not. So it just it doesn't matter if you're in school or in homeschooling or whatever. Everyone is receiving this somehow by mail, I would assume. So all mail is going to make a lot of money. Um, and uh, what it is, it's uh, it's obviously it's not a comp it's it's not a full fully functional computer itself. It's just like a little bit bit of programmable thing. You connect it. Has USB connectors. Has a lot of LED lights, so you can actually make it into like almost a game or whatever. You make you can have it programmed to display stuff. And it has buttons. It has two buttons, a couple of things to plug into other things, and LED buttons essentially. Oh, and it has Bluetooth. Um, and some other oh an accelerometer like the kind of it's like a smartphone without the phone sort of yeah yeah and pretty much a lot of a lot of uh, functions it's it's yeah a kit pretty yeah. much isn't it exactly yeah. so it, it's very much raspberry pi less of it kind of in a smaller yeah. amount yeah. for kids to get interested in uh, technology uh, I, yeah. I assume that's the that's the idea so it's pretty cool and they're going to sell it as well in i think starting september sorry i interrupted you Ooh. No, no, I interrupted you. Uh, I would have said that I would be suspicious of this as like some way of gaining back a little bit of like public support from the BBC, since the recent, for some reason, tied against the BBC that I've, I've been noticing. Maybe you have as well. I have, yeah. but it seems like too big a project to have just shit out as response to that. So probably not the case. But it will help, I think, with uh, perhaps some of the more like uh, technically minded or technically aspirational. Families, I guess, in 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 the country, I think it's great. Yeah, uh, so. they, they, it's interesting that they are actually um, have some money troubles uh, because uh, the license, uh, TV license, whatever revenue is is falling um, because people like Ed Hicks don't have a TV and they're ruining BBC. Yeah. Um, and so they were like, they they were actually mentioning this, and then and they're also, but they're also spending money on like this kind of educational stuff. So you know, better spend than obviously on. You know what's his face, the 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 Top Gear guy. Um, oh yeah. yeah. But it, still, I I don't know. How they they're also gonna give like to if you're seventy or, or above or something, you don't have to pay nowadays apparently, or from starting next year the TV license thing. So, to have it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're it's I I I guess they're gonna start looking for other places to get money from because the government's obviously not giving them any more money. Um, so it's gonna be interesting to do what to see what they will kind of do with this and where they're what the future like next five years of bbc gonna hold yeah i hope it doesn't fuck them up too much i mean i i've always been like suspicious of their news stuff because i you know people say oh they're the leftist bias i'm like jesus if they have a leftist bias what is this like a fucking leftist <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, like a real leftist channel yeah. look like or, or what does it what no sorry what is a what is a, a right-leaning yeah. channel look like um, yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I always found that they were a little bit uh, suspect in that regard. But I really like how they make that. Like their content's usually really high production value, really like not shit generally. And they have, in some ways, can do some unique stuff because of the way they're funded, and they don't have to have like they, you could put a film on there with no ad breaks. Yeah, that's it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I almost feel guilty for not paying license just for that alone, even though I don't use it. It's like if a library closed, I'd be like, oh, no, even though I never go into a library. But then, then again, they also have, but like, anyway. the one show and, like, the breakfast stuff. They're horrible. Like, they're, they're, they're yeah. the, like their breakfast show is the cringest shit you've ever seen. <laughs> one show is unwatchable and extremely yeah. popular, obviously, as a result. <laughs> of, of the of the circumstance, it's like it's like PewDiePie, something something really horrible to watch. Everyone's getting fucked up about how they're getting paid. Yeah, and everyone likes it. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, speaking of people with financial problems, um, I've heard that Mad Cats have some financial problems. Ed, uh, this is Tell one us. of the uh, more bad uh, bits of news, but this is uh, once again falls into the fighting games domain. 
So I hear tell that Mad Cats, uh, makers of very good fight sticks and very shit other peripherals. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Their mice and, are amazing. Ooh. <laughs> Mice look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Their keyboards look like shit. But they, the fight sticks are good, if, even though apparently they have slightly more lag than the average fight stick. As they often say, they uh, they've got lots of top eight players who use them, so obviously it can't be uh, that bad. Okay. Uh, they also sponsor a lot of uh, fighting game fighters, including Daigo, arguably the best fighting game player in history. Uh, so yeah, they, they're kind of a big force in that arena. The thing is, it seems like they're in kind of shitty money troubles it seems like they're at the point where one big flop will would will, you know would give them serious problems possibly kill them um and what they're betting the farm on it seems is rock band four five four i the, think four the 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 new uh, rock band that's coming yeah. out in the peripherals uh involved and this is worrying because uh i don't really believe despite lots of people being very very upset about a widow article saying how somebody wasn't that interested in rock band. Uh, I actually believe that most of those people also don't really care about rock band and aren't going to go out and buy it. <laughs> so it could be the case. Also, by the way, this rock band apparently is going to be backwards compatible with all the instruments that were there for the previous ones. So I feel that there's going to be quite a small pool of people who are going to spend the $250 or whatever for the full set of uh, rock band gear. I'm a little worried that this is going to harm possibly irreparably uh, mad cats and have basically make it so that harmonics and games I don't give a fuck about having a knock-on effect and fucking up games that I do. And I'm a gamer and you can't mess with me. <laughs> God, don't mess with Ed. <laughs> uh, so that's just... It's no guarantee they'll go down. It, it, maybe it was just a slightly alarmist article, but it got me worried and I thought I'd mention it. What, what if they make these guitars and stuff and they all look like they're mice and keyboards? They're like just skeleton versions of... <sighs> and it could be like the, the mad, mad riffs or so. I don't know. They call it some kind of... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The I don't cat, know. I cat mean... drums. <laughs> I... I'm just like throwing out. I'm trying to help them. I'm you know? spitballing I... here. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't want them to be in financial troubles or whatever, so... Trying to trying to pitch in, you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, and all the guitars that I remember seeing, I, I feel like I've seen one or two in person. They just look like Fisher Price <laughs> toys. So, yeah. So I mean, it wouldn't take much to make them look cool, but then at the same time, the kind of people who are buying it are probably the same fucking knobs who are buying that Mega Man helmet. So I don't know what they like. I don't know. I don't understand how they what? work. What what if they if they go out of business? Is there anyone else making uh, peripherals for like Street Fighter? Yeah, yeah. There's actually quite a few. It's just um, obviously more is better, more different approaches, more competition. Yeah. Sponsors for fighting games keeps keeps you know uh, tournaments going. Yeah. And are paying people to be professionals and, and helping the scene, and so it would be bad. But you could easily get a uh, you know Quam Canva sticks to have you run out some. Or, or a whole bunch of other, like mostly it would be Japanese. I think right. that cat system though. Well, you know, um, maybe they have like a mobile phone business they can sell off or something and make make money out of that. <laughs> I've, I've heard that's going pretty well. Oh. Well, here's people who oh. don't have money problems but may have some other problems, uh, and that's the Cloud Imperium. Uh, so the people behind Star Citizen again. Uh, the men in this very stylish um, shirt that Ed unfortunately cannot see is. Um, Alex, I think it's Murray. Let me actually double check his name because I know he existed until this happened. So this is uh, Alex. It's no, nice. it's not Murray. It's Maybury. Um, so he was uh, executive producer on Star Citizen, and uh, suddenly, uh, apparently, no relation to their news of them indefinitely delaying their FPS module, also quit his job. Um, interestingly enough, and and this is uh, again, this is the part I find fascinating is. Um, that uh, I forgot the leader's name, the main guy, the main dude, whatever, the guy in charge who like behind the idea of Star ah. Citizen. Um, yeah. He said that yeah, yeah, he left family reasons or personal reasons or whatever. We're good. We're going full steam ahead. And he's saying this about a game that is already delayed for a year overall. So he should have been out, out last year, um, according to his Kickstarter yeah. goals. Um, and then he says that this is not going to affect the production in any way. 
So, but I'm thinking here, like, you had an executive producer who is gone now, and um, I understand the role is a difference. Executive producer is not a producer. They do a slightly different job. Yeah. But then again, if you didn't yeah. really need him, because um, <laughs> now that he's gone, I apparently like it's fine. You might as well save some money, put it in the FPS module, instead of paying for this guy's Diablo shirt that he's wearing in the picture, or something. I don't know. It's, you know, like, this is not a, like, a minimum wage job, executive producer on, on a game with, like, 30 million budget or whatever it is right now. So, I don't, I don't know. Weird. Anyway, so their troubles kind of continue, like, sort of, but at the same time, they keep yeah. having the bravado of being like, no, no, we are actually fine. It, this is... This is great, and um, not at all salty at uh, Alex living uh, for this, his job and, and going to do. We something. wish him all the best. All in the, the best. Cayman Islands. Yeah, <laughs> for for greener postures, uh, he, he has gone. Uh, <laughs> but uh, there is another man who is actually also a um, in charge of a video game project and is angry. Um, this is John Smedley, who is who's, who's very who's very angry. Uh, recently, was very angry. To, well, yesterday was very angry. Ed, why was John Smedley angry? He writes on anger. Oh, he was angry because oh, he was angry because uh, he heard the news about the what are they called? Lizard Squad. Lizard Squad. Is that, is yeah. that a real? They, okay. See, like, like, let me. Like, I'm gonna be rude and interrupt you. Uh, do you know about this story about Al Qaeda? Where there's a version that Al Qaeda didn't exist until media created it, and I don't know if it's true. Obviously, I just read this an article I think in New York Times I love like that idea. five years ago. I think that's really cool. So apparently, what like, happened, like, according to this version, is they got some guy and they're like looking for some dudes who did some terrorist shit at some point or some insurgency, whatever, and they started torturing him. And they were like, who did this? Who did this? And then the guy's already <laughs> fucked up. They're torturing <laughs> him, and he was like, Al Qaeda. And they were like, oh god, Al Qaeda, new organization. And they started looking, and they started talking about Al Qaeda. And then the people in, in like, I don't know, in <laughs> Afghanistan or somewhere in Pakistan, they're going like, well, this is Al Qaeda. They're talking, you know, the 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 fucking kafirs are talking one about. This guy jumps up and he goes, I'm Al Qaeda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then they go, I am Spartacus. You know, and that's how Al Qaeda was created. And I, I. <laughs> I feel like the Lizard Squad is the same deal. They someone in in some some news like Fox News went like Lizard Squad are doing stuff. Kids computers. Andrew, are... I have a fear. Did did we make Lizard Squad? Because this sounds like something we said drunkenly in TFTD. Yeah, it does sound like I'm something. I'm wondering if like some, <laughs> we have some viewer who's a hacker and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna be a part of Lizard Squad. Maybe we're talking about hackers and drinking red wine. Like, yeah, yeah. Probably setting the scene. I, we're like, oh good, it's just lizards. Send in the lizard squad, and they're like, oh, those guys seem cool. Like, yeah, we need to hack their their carapace. Well, this this guy, we, the you know, the, the the we're gonna talk about in a second is from Finland, and then we have this viewer from Estonia who is like into like hacking stuff. Is I'm not sure how good it is. So there could be a connection. Estonia is right next to Finland, so it could it could have been us. So tell us um, what happened. One thing about uh, this person that it's uh, this is regarding is he looks exactly like someone I uh, actually I'll, I'll explain first who the fuck he is. So um, this Lizard Squad character basically is this guy who somehow got nabbed by uh, the FBI and the Finnish police uh, finally for uh, apparently uh, committing a bunch of hacks on PlayStation Network or was it also Bomb, it was like fake bomb hack? threats, I think. Uh, that's, they, oh, didn't actually, I'm not threats. sure they actually got him. No, they got him for hacking, but I find, well, it was not for PSN. It was for something, no. some other hacking that he did. I think it was like personal accounts and fraud, okay. like money, sort of like someone's credit card shit. But they haven't actually nailed him for whatever else because there's like whatever, 11 cases or something waiting for him to still happen. Right, so he's in the, the legal system and there's a whole bunch of paperwork still to go. Uh, and I think, yeah, like you said, he's 17, and so yeah. I think he may be getting off very lightly compared to an adult yeah. on uh, some of the things he's doing. And uh, it seems somehow that, um, was it John Smedley? Is that the name of the guy? Yeah, John Smedley. Yeah, John Smedley has some very personal beef with him. Like, he's claiming that the, one of the airplanes that was grounded was because of the bomb threat that is uh, pinned to this guy. Yeah. I believe, and uh, and other stuff. Oh yeah, I believe he also said uh, that if he gets um, 
nailed for the PSN thing, which I think is still pending or something. Uh, he's going to be up his ass with lawyers as well. Yeah. Um, oh, just before we go on to our reactions to this reaction, um, <laughs> the guy, the picture of the of this hacker looks exactly like racist Paul, the guy I disowned. <laughs> He looks uh, exactly like him. I was like, whoa, they have arrested racist Paul. But younger or exactly like him anyway? Well, racist Paul's definitely like almost 10 years older than him, but having no hair, you kind of look timeless. In All your right. you, you're right. That, that, that's a great quote from, from you for 2015. Having no hair, you kind of look timeless, Ed Hicks. <laughs> it makes old people look young and young people look older. Yeah, again, another... Another zinger. So, uh, he, uh, we were actually discussing this before the show, that his reaction is, it seems angrier than it should be from, like, you know, he's not a, you know, John Smedley isn't in some kind of nobody raging on the internet. He is a somewhat famous game developer, I guess, so he's not necessarily, like, doing the actual dirty work. I think he's a project manager for um, uh, H1Z1, the aptly, aptly named game. <laughs> He's becoming famous now, it seems, for being cross at hackers. Yeah, exactly. Because he was, he, we, we already did a thing where he was um, first banning, what was it, 30,000 people from yeah. H1Z1 and then pardoning five and yeah, or yeah. four or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's to him with videos. Which yeah. is, I mean, I still think it's an amazing move, but I still think it's a move. And I, we kind of uh, are a little bit in agreement here on this that it looks a bit to just like a media move than what he really thinks but you you bro bro broke up a bit it reminds it, me like, at some that? point oh sorry oh it, there we go you're back yeah yeah okay cool it, it reminds me a little bit of like um jim sterling i feel like at some point someone must have said to him uh like maybe he did one video where he's wearing creepy gloves and then someone <laughs> in the comments said oh dude like I know it's a bit unconventional, but I actually think those gloves look really good. And he really took it to heart and then just decided to wear them all the time. And maybe that's what happened here is he just snapped one day and was like, fuck all these hackers. I just And he found a way to get rid of a bunch of them and then did this funny thing where he would pardon them. And people were like, yeah, man, I thought H1Z1 was a piece of shit clone, <laughs> but actually you're pretty cool. And then he was like, okay, maybe I can just be angry at hackers. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, it seems like it, it even more than like a fan advice that it, this is some kind of like image PR thing almost. It, it feels con <laughs> yeah constructed like he's he's whatever um, PR guy was like. You know what? We need we need to fight against something. Let's choose something <laughs> to fight. And I know they give this advice because um, I I almost finished reading a book that was actually. I saw I saw a blog entry, so this is a slightly longer story from um, the the what's his name last name Gary the the Gary mod Gary the Rust guy, you know the the famous person behind Rust. Oh yeah. So and he was recommending a a book uh, on uh, he was essentially talking about how when some indie games fail they blame everybody else apart from their own mistakes and and he was talking yeah. about this and it was one of the things you were saying he recommended this book called. I think rework uh, by Thirty Seven Signals, which is apparently some software pro company that does uh, some kind of project management software stuff that is apparently pretty famous. But I've never dealt with it, so I forgot what it's called. Uh, and one of the things they're talking about okay. is um, uh, how you uh, need to find an enemy, in in and it's good a good business move to do that. Like for example, Dunkin' Donuts has. Um, uh, Starbucks as their enemy. Apparently, I found I found out this from this book. So, so they're like they often like talk shit about them or like Pepsi and Coke. They're doing this thing and people go like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm the Pepsi guy and you know, I'm a Coke guy and whatever. And then they feel like this loyalty bullshit and it's really really cringe. And but it's after you kind of read this advice in a popular business kind of book, you go like, oh, 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 I see. Kind of, you know. So um, I think potentially that's what's happening with Mr. Smedley. You you can have enemies, but um, having enemies to sell something—that's yeah. a, that's a the next level. Yes. Yeah. 
I like it. I like your style, kid. You'll go far. Yeah, send the devil. <laughs> um, speaking of the devil, here's Hitman. Um, apparently um, having... Uh, that's how shall we put this. Issues with definitions and words. So You're locked in here with me. <laughs> so... Hitman something something, uh, the recent edition. By the way, this is again. I have a feeling about this game, the similar I have to the invention of the wheel. Uh, but they keep inventing it every sequel. So, more yeah. than Metal Gear, I have to say. Yeah, exactly. So um, with Hitman, what's going on is that uh, they are releasing on the eighth of December, but it's not the full game. So the journalist goes. So, are you doing an early access? And then, I think Ubisoft is in charge of this, isn't, aren't they? I believe. Uh, it feels like them. Uh, Square Enix? Oh, maybe Square Enix. I, I always get those two mixed up, even though they're from different countries. Yeah. Um, it's in the text. It says Hitman and Square Enix on the oh, yes. Excellent. So, so, Square Enix went, Oh, no, 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 no. This is going to be a finished game. Uh, mm -hmm. when it comes out. So then there's, oh, so, but some of the stuff is going to be missing. Yeah, yeah, so we're going to be kind of moving next few months, going to be re adding more stuff. And then they go, oh, is it going to be episodic content? Like, you know, they're episodic games. So obviously, whoever's interviewing them or whoever's talking to them is, is trying to put it in some kind of existing framework. And they go, no, 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 no. Because episodic sometimes means that you don't get the full experience immediately. Well, here... You get the full experience, except that there's going to be more stuff coming after the end. So it, it feels like they are doing early access episodic content uh, without yeah. willing to actually admit that this is what's going on and taking £45 to $60, depending on where you are, upfront for your pleasure. Now, the thing that they're saying, it sort of sounds like if I were to generously translate this into a game, it would be like Payday 2. You know how they... they did keep adding stuff to it. I believe they had plans to keep adding stuff to it. Uh, I mean, I guess part of the amount they added was based on its relative success, but um, it's okay to make a, a game that stands on its own and then plan to support it with content long afterwards. That's that's okay. Um, but yeah, maybe, I don't know. The, the thing is that if that is the case, you can't call it episodic and you can't call it early access. But you do need some thing to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. Yeah. It's rough. Uh, but yeah, I can, in a way, I've sort of talked myself into understanding their dilemma if it is that situation. But also, they do get paid to communicate, so they should say something. They should say, We're, Hitman's on red light. It's <laughs> cool. Purple light. light. Um, Purple light. Yeah. Or, or maybe... Uh, green, it's on Green Lantern, but um, <laughs> pay, Payday. If Imagine talking, Hitman. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Payday Two, if that's what you're talking about, is doesn't cost forty five pounds. It costs fifteen pounds, and that's because it's a PC game. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, but this is also talking about PC version of it is going to be forty five pounds, and you know, yeah. I'm surprised it's not sixty to be honest, but. Um, Payday also had after you paid that fifteen pounds, and then you had, I don't know how many updates that were also kind of free, and then there's stuff that you could pay for, like the cosmetic, cosmetic yeah. stuff, and they had a lot of yeah. free missions as well, I believe. I believe, and even if they didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you had to buy them, they, they were like three pounds each, and if they had ten, they would be like you could decide whether or not you wanted that content as opposed to yeah. you can't. So I say I buy Hitman on or Hitman whatever on Steam. And I want to, I, I have this two hours to play it and, you know, then I, I can redo the refund, right? But what yeah. I get in for the price for those two hours isn't even the full game. So I'm thinking, you know what, maybe they'll release more content later. So I'm not going to refund. Then the two weeks go by, I can't refund it anymore. It's, it's, right. It feels like they may be going for that kind of thing as well now in the light of Steam having refunds. That's interesting, like uh, coming up with seemingly innocuous release <laughs> models that, that that like give you a big fat base game that there's not really anything to do. They just about like they go, oh, there'll be something. Don't worry, don't worry. And then kind of the the remaining content slithers out of them, and it's horribly <laughs> Destiny and, uh, <laughs> and Red and Destiny. Like, 
<laughs> Red Dead Destiny, yeah. and they couldn't and they can't return it. That's an interesting concept as well. It could be. Um, yeah, I'm not I, saying that's what's happening, but I mean, yeah, it, could, it could. Yeah, I mean, at the same time, I guess that's probably alarmist of us, uh, uh, but potentially it's something that could eventually factor in. It, I think before people really start factoring that in, there needs to be a, a game that really bombs because people <clears> went. <throat> Nah, fuck you. You know, like I suppose Batman are people like returning that in droves. Actually, no, they took it off uh, Steam, didn't they? They, yeah, but they didn't uh, return that much of it. I think they're because you could have ca- oh. kept it and then wait for them to fix it and blah blah. So, I, I, as far as I know, a lot of people kept it. Okay. So, um, but yeah, it's not. I, my 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 sort of concern isn't really. I I don't feel this necessarily alarmist because whenever people are dancing around words and being like, no, 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 it's not really. Uh, uh, no, it's actually it's not. Really, we don't call that that. Mm, you know, it's always like okay, yeah. there's something wrong here. If you can't formulate yeah. specifically what is it that you are selling, means there is a problem. That's it. The problem may be yeah. small, big, or a medium size, but something's up. It's, somebody probably told you you're going to go out there, you're going to talk this fucking game up, and you know what you're not going to say? You're not going to say <laughs> early access. You're not going to say DLC after yeah. the fact. And then there's a picture, the a picture of your family. It's a picture of a family. Put puts a Nintendo gun from the NES against us, like or or your family gets it. Uh, <laughs> that's great. Like over one of the kids, it says early access. And then over <laughs> the wife, it says episodic. <laughs> and, and they're like, mm-hmm. and the guy's like, okay, okay. <laughs> Good thing we mentioned Destiny because yeah. our last item is about Destiny. Um, it loops back. It's like it start, it's like one of those albums. Oh my God! Something. What have we done? <laughs> it's the looping podcast. It is. It title. is. <laughs> uh, this is uh, Mr. Cross, uh, David Cross, in fact, who is better known as Tobias yeah. uh, from Arrested Development. From uh, yes. And it turns out that he uh, was invited together with another dude uh, whose name I forgot, another comedian. Um, to write, uh, not really write the script, but punch up the script for um, Destiny, the game. And um, obviously paid and spent several days there punching this stuff up and had fun. This is self reported. Was excited. Yeah, well, was excited to have his jokes in Destiny. Uh, and uh, none of those jokes were Red taken. Idea. Yeah. Um, none yeah. of the jokes were in the end uh, used, apparently. So, because he said he played the game and he didn't find a single fucking joke he made in that game. So, unless they're Damn. really, really well hidden, uh, <laughs> Tob- Tobias's jokes uh, went down the drain somewhere. P- paid jokes yeah, as well. Cool. Yeah, they they probably yeah. thought like, ah oh, man, we gotta make this bland, and they did. <laughs> well, I I had this feeling like. Maybe the, what they wanted to go for with Destiny was that kind of uh, Borderlands style. I don't know how much like you saw about Borderlands and what it's like because I do don't, I do dislike it. I think it's yeah. quite a bad game. Um, but they definitely had a strong style and tone, and there were lots of like jokes and inside jokes and references and self references yeah. and stuff. It was that kind of thing, almost like a Joss Whedon game, but uh, maybe even goofier and. Um, less I, serious. I played but, about uh, 15 yeah. hours of the first one, so I have some, okay. some idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have yeah. a decent idea of what yeah. yeah. Well, now viewers, you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so mate, I've had this feeling like the universe was like that. It was the same empty, shoot things until your finger hurts kind of universe. And I guess it, w- it would make sense to lighten that up. But I, I suppose they were going down that direction. This is all just guesswork, but just from you know, the information we have. But I guess at some stage, somebody said, no, that's not the tone. The tone is drink Red Bull, you <laughs> scumbags. Yeah. And yeah, maybe one of the jokes was about Red Bull. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe. Um, yeah. I, I heard this story about a similarly wasteful uh, thing. This is re- regarding Google. I don't know if I've told you before. Uh, I, I, uh, I was over in LA and this guy told me about it because he was working as an editor on this big old project. It was like a big video project, like an internal corporate thing, Google. And uh, really expensive, doing tons of work, like minutes and minutes of footage. And there's this one scene where two characters are talking about Eric Schmidt. And uh, one of them says, oh, you know, uh, Eric Schmidt. <laughs> and the other guy goes, ah, oh, Schmitty. And uh, uh, so Eric Schmidt reviews this thing. And he apparently 
unbeknownst to the people who wrote this, fucking does not want anyone calling him Schmidt uh, <laughs> at all. And he just pulls the plug on the entire project based off of that. <laughs> and I get millions of dollars wasted just because of this one joke. Well, not even really a joke, just like a little aside where someone says, ah, Schmitty. <laughs> wasn't, so, uh, yeah. Wasn't there a campaign by um, some Silicon Valley person uh, trying to get signatures to make Eric Schmidt the CEO of America or something like that? And like everyone thought it was a joke, oh, but yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> wasn't yeah it was like when you put that that government petition to change the word gold to golden or something like that yeah just remove the word golden <laughs> from english they, they, they wrote like, me uh they wrote me serious letters explaining to me why they can't do it it was pretty good <laughs> that's great right yeah um yeah, yeah so I heard about that as well. Yeah, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah. And everyone was like, oh, yeah, it wasn't, it, the wording was really funny as well. It was like, well, oh, Google's a really successful corporation. Why don't we just upgrade and just basically yeah. look after the whole of America? Upgrade the country. Yeah, yeah exactly. They, there was even, I, I forgot, someone even wrote a short story about this where how <laughs> how Eric Sch Schmidt calls Obama and Obama says, I understand and resigns and gives over the power to him or something like it's like some kind of fan oh fiction. People start writing like it. fan fiction. Well, like ironic fan fiction about this is also. It's, it's pretty. <laughs> you know, it's pretty hilarious. We need to find a link to that. That sounds amazing. Yeah, and I, I, there was a whole debate whether or not the person is serious, and I think it like turned out that you know it was very unlikely, but apparently they were being serious because <laughs> like no one could believe it, and like it was not a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. No. but this is the thing. Good really, old Schmitty. I think Everything I hear, sorry, everything I hear about people from like Silicon Valley, like it seems to kind of be sort of true in, in a lot of ways. Like they're very disconnected from reality, and yeah. this is why you get things like all kinds of features cut from Google, no explanation. Entire like services just cut, no warning, no explanation, and you're just like, what? And they're like, it's to improve your experience. Please enjoy <laughs> this new interface. Fuck. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's my own personal gripe, and maybe I'm projecting a bit, but uh, it does seem whenever I hear anything about people from Silicon Valley, like they are almost or more bizarre than uh, as as you hear. Yeah, they they they're at the state Just where they become like a, almost a parody of like you can't tell which one what, what part is a parody or what is a joke or or not. You know that there are things that reach that state yeah. of like. Okay, which one are you doing right now? Are you being serious or, or, or what, what? What is going on? I yeah, I'm I'm confused. Okay, you win, you win. I'm confused. So which one is it? Is, are you serious? Go <laughs> on, tell, tell me which which. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. take it. I can take it. Tell me which is it. Which is it? Uh, we, we should have this like is my anal <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like why not? Sure. Um, we should we should have like a British Silicon Valley called like Crampet, Crampet Lowlands or something. I don't know. Like just it's like a serious. <laughs> The Crawford Lowlands. That's such a cool way. <laughs> Where like it's not it's it's not at least unintentionally funny or something like that. If it's funny, it's yeah, like yeah. it was purposefully done so. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> we'll 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 open it in Surrey or somewhere somewhere and somewhere yeah, nearby. Somewhere depressing. Yeah. I uh, sure it's not. I guess not that bad. Maybe go, go to Newcastle. That's where we open. Sorry, it. actually, it just has a horrible name. Maybe somewhere like Staines. Yeah, Hull, <laughs> or Romford. Yeah, a Hull, perfect. Yeah, I think it would work. Yeah, sorry, places in England that I just listed. <laughs> sorry's okay, actually. <laughs> I, I don't know why I was being mean to sorry. I, I don't know like either. I was, place. I was, I was actually surprised. I was like, what is going on here? Um, yeah. I'm out of news. Are you? Do you want to say anything else? Uh, I'm super excited about my Street Fighter t-shirt. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> that's this, it. This is going to be our entire like next a... episode. It's going to be... Yeah, as... it's Wait, is, you're going to have it by next yeah. episode, right? Uh, no, I don't think so. You'll be the one after. Okay, so the one after that... There. Yeah, it's going to be the one yeah. where we're just going to discuss different aspects of Ed's signed t-shirt by Mike Ross. Yeah. On, on the happy thought, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. If you're watching this on YouTube, please help us out. Share it with your grandmother. Uh, we go live every Thursday, 10 p.m. BST. If you want to check it out live, the link is in the description. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.
Bye. We did it. We did the show. Good stuff. It was a thing. We we've completed our ghetto holiday podcast tour of two places <laughs> and me in a bedroom with a laptop. Also, my new band. <laughs>